Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pam. Thank you, everyone, for having us here. And Priscilla is also a part of mm -hmm. so if you ever need anything um, with this, you can take her mask off. <laughs> Amanda, if you were like, 
Okay. Any questions? You guys are out of Indiana? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're a biotech in the state of Ohio. Okay. Um, so Medicare, um, Ohio Medicaid, and private insurance. Okay. Agencies. Um, all of our pharmacists, is licensed in Ohio, so we have a license. Okay. Okay. And if you have to send them to Sure. Absolutely. Sorry. Um, any other questions? There you go. So the second pillar happens to be technology. And with technology, we offer a lot of other things. Um, right now, our current um, software system offers 15 EMR systems. So there is other things that you can um, listen to it, and you can go through and decide which one works best for you. Some of them are just This is what a completed product would look like when it's and you will get to the program. I'm sorry, I'll start with what it's for. So for anxiety or something right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be helpful. Great question. Anybody else have any Um another thing with the EMAR is um, they can take a picture of all your clients for um, and then email this to the security for you. Um, of how to your training your individual ask medications and that'll be uh, and we just want to let you know um this base post the only thing that works funny there is no charge for that so with that being said you can take the EMR out of your system and there is no charge for you to have that okay any questions about your mind? Well, I guess. Yes. What do you mean is our choosing? So there's um eight ox bucket to choose it. Yes, and you um it's two emails.
Um, there's one um, under Point Click Care. I don't know if you've ever heard of that company. There's one called Quickmar. Um, there's a couple other ones that are extended care professionals. It kind of depends on what you're looking for in an EMAR. We can help set you up with some demos and then you can choose which one you want. So it's not you have to have this one. You just get to use one that works best for you. Yes. Um, can you tell them what EMAR stands for? for yes. Some people that are new? I'm so sorry. So an EMAR stands for an electric electronic, electronic sorry, electronic <laughs> medication administration record. So that would be a lot of times what the paper that you would sign on um, for each your initials to pass medications. It would be electric instead. Electronic. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another part of our technology piece happens to be the training. So with our training, we do offer a CE library that's available. And with our CE library um, in the state of Ohio for your medication aids, you have a specific program that you have to use um, to get them certified in your state. Um, but with that certification, do you have to, um, with the CE credits for professional, for, for professional development, we do have this library that's available. Um, currently, there are six one to two hour programs. We have four more that are in the making. Um, and we love to hear training opportunities. So anything that you have a question about, something that you need additional training on for your staff, we would love to hear what those ideas are so we can get training programs put together. These trainings are available online. You can take them anytime, day or night, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And it's great for, even if you don't use them for CE credits, you can use them for professional development, you can use them for disciplinary training, um, just additional information that you can have. I, do you guys do in staff that you do monthly? So it could be, maybe you're all snowed in one month and you need some training. You can ask them all to go onto the website, click in, sign in and do you know a two hour training. So with the trainings, they do come with certificates of completion. Um, there is a test at the end of each training and you have to pass an 80% or higher to get that certificate, but then that certificate is delivered to you. Um, you can print that out and keep it for your records. Um, five rights, one of them. Um, there happens to be um, a couple of trainings on diabetic. Um, MAR, how to read a MAR um, with a sliding scale, things like that. Um, that's going to just teach and enhance your staff and their staff. Is there any questions regarding the training? Okay. We can also offer Zoom and um, Microsoft Team meetings if you have any questions regarding perhaps how to pass a medication, how to be more effective, more accurate on your documentation, things like that. We can always set up Zoom meetings um, and team meetings with your staff um, and whomever needs to attend, either Priscilla um, for a pharmacist's point of view or you know Amanda and your dedicated technician for you know other issues, concerns that you might have. Okay. The other thing is, is we do also offer in-person training. So if you ever need some training in person, um, we have staff, Amanda is probably your number one that will come out. Um, she's more than happy to come out to your home, um, to your group facilities and do some training with your staff. Please just let us know what it is that you're like needing training on and then we can pull together some resources and get those to you. Okay. So our third pillar happens to be accuracy and this slide is um, is a little bit more in detail because this is actually our process of how we fill our medications. And so it, we call it the six step process. So with this, the first one is um, once you sign on with Safe Dose and we get all the information that we need and we'll go through all of that as far as what we need. Um, but once the information comes to us, all the information is placed into the computer. The technician puts it all in. The pharmacist verifies that everything is correct. We're going to generate what we call a fill list. 
And if you would look, um, it is the very first piece of paper that happens to be in that folder. Um, that's what a fill list would look like. Um, Tiffany, that was one of those um, yeah. papers that we scanned in. Great. So I'm going to have Amanda explain to you what a fill list is and what, it, what we do with it. Our fill list represents everything that we're going to send with the monthly cycle. So it's typically everything that would be in your compliance box. Um, it will also include any bulk items that clients need monthly. It will list, as you can see, it lists the drug, what time of day we're scheduled to take them, the directions. Um, it will also list the quote quantity we're going to send and the prescription number. So we'll send a list of everyone in your associated with your group to you, usually about two weeks before we're going to send it. That gives you a chance to review it. Let us know if, oh, you know, Larry wants to take his Tic Tac at 10 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. or, you know, things like that. If we need to adjust things or if something's been discontinued or if, you know, Larry has a doctor appointment coming up next week and you think there might be changes, it's a great time to let us know so we can update his box accordingly. And then we'll, after we have received this back, then we start the process of actually making the box. So the next step in the process happens to be once we know what the fill list is and to make sure that it's correct, then what we do, we have you sign off on that and either email it back to us or fax it back to us. We do have a secure email that you, that's um, HIPAA secured. Um, but then we start doing the pre-billing. And what this allows us to do is catch anything that's um, not formulary or something that needs a prior authorization. <coughs> And um, it also allows us to catch if there's a higher copayment, maybe perhaps that, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, uh, there may be a copayment higher. We can catch that. If I understand formulary, but you want to explain formulary just in case some don't understand it? Explain what formulary. I'm going to drug it on formulary <laughs> versus non formulary. Basically, formulary is what the insurance prefers to pay for. So after the first of the year, we have noticed insurance doesn't prefer to pay for particular inhalers they want to pay for a different one that's comparable so at that point we'd reach out to the doctor and say hi you know they've been taking x insurance now prefers y that's comparable will you switch it over so it's just whatever that that prescription plan will cover at that time of meds that can change every year correct, correct. it can change often <laughs> Often. But when we yeah. do that pre-billing, we are able to see that and understand that. And then we start the process. We'll call the doctor. We will do the legwork for you. So you're not required to do that. Um, we will reach out to you with the answer that the doctor gave to us and to let you know that it is happening and this is what we're doing. Um, so you're aware of the situation, but you're not required to do anything um, unless we need you for some reason. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Very good. Okay. So the next process, uh, the third process in, or the third step in the process is we start packaging all the medications then according to what we found out from steps one and two. So we don't even start packaging the medications until we get to this step. That saves us um, from having to repackage and to make sure that everybody gets what they need at the time that they need it. Okay. Our packages, um, you've got the samples in the front. This is what the final product looks like. But with our packages, they are actually, we have the technology that they are actually viewed and photographed um, by a couple pieces of equipment that we have that's in the pharmacy. And I'm going to actually let Priscilla explain that process, if you would. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, after the packets are filled by the machine. They run through a separate machine that's called an Inspect RX. Um, what it does is take a photo of the top and bottom of each packet, as well as an infrared photo that shows the pills and the location of the pills in the packet. It then analyzes that because it has a huge database of all millions of medications and what they're supposed to look like. So it tells us if what's in that packet is what is supposed to be in that packet. If, it, if there's any question, if a pill is sitting on its side, if a pill is maybe up against the edge of the picture and it's not catching the whole pill, it'll flag that packet and a pharmacist has to verify that yes, that is actually what's supposed to be in that packet. If there is any sort of mistake at all, the machine 
drop two pills instead of one pill, something like that. Um, we will make, we will correct the packet. We'll make a small split in the packet, take out what needs to be taken out or replace a broken tablet or something like that. We put a pharmacy altered sticker on that tablet and then we re-photograph the, the packet again. And those photos are now kept forever um, in the cloud. <laughs> which is super nice. We can always go back and look at the packets because they actually have numbers on them. So we can look at them, say, say one of your um, caregivers says there wasn't any pills in this packet. You know, um, we can go back and look and say, yeah, there, there was when it left the pharmacy. So, or no, there wasn't, or, no, there wasn't, or you know, whatever it might be. Um, a lot of, in, in our experience, a lot of times we've found, you know, sometimes pills will get dropped on the floor or something like that. You know, um, it happens. It happens. So then we can replace those, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just another liability um, mm -hmm. for you, for your business, um, for your individuals to make sure that they truly are getting the medication mm -hmm. that they were there. Mm -hmm. so. And that everything's correct. That's right. It is mm -hmm. correct. <laughs> Any questions about the packets? Thank you for mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's that already went. Okay, <laughs> so once we once we get through this process, um, the last step to our process is everything is then taken to our shipping technician. Now he is also a licensed um, certified technician, and what he's going to do is take that original fill list that you started with that you approved. Um, he's going to take that fill list and then he's going to take it to everything that was brought to him. He's going to check the box. He's going to make sure that all the labels truly are there. Everything is there. He's going to make sure the box are there, any kind of PRNs that need to be. So he's taking that fill list and he's going to um, make sure that what he has is truly there. He's going to box that all up. And in that box, he's going to put a delivery sheet in there. And the delivery sheet, it happens to be your second piece of paper in there. And then that way, it's kind of like a packing list almost for you guys when you get your boxes. Everything is shipped through UPS. With you being in Ohio, it would be a one-day ship for us. Um, so with that, that you just would sign off that you received it, that what is in your box is correct, and then just email fax it back however you would like to do that. Um, but because of the process that we have found, we have had a 99.97% accuracy rating for every medication that has left our buildings for at least the last six years. We started tracking it six years ago, so I can say that. Um, but the other part of that is, is I bet you if you ask your current pharmacy, they're either one, not tracking, or two, they're not there. Anything to add to that? Well, anything to add? No. <laughs> Anybody have any questions regarding the process? Yes, sir. Just out of curiosity, with such a high accuracy, what's the problem? What what's the what's the one that comes up? That's great. That's, not That's great. So when we um, so he asked, what was the what was the 0.03 percent? Um, what does that consist of? And so what that does consist of is we actually anything that happens to be late for UPS that you don't get on time, we actually count that as as an error. If something happens to be spilled or um, damaged in shipment, maybe the box got squished or something like that and something inside didn't come out correctly, or if there was happened to be an error that actually left the pharmacy for some reason. Um, but all of those do incorporate that. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Great question. Any other questions? So this slide, um, it, it does speak the volume. So what this is, um, this is actually a facility that we enrolled back in 2017. And if you see before safe dose, they were having 63 administrative errors within a three month time period. And so once you look through, it looked, uh, once they hit the last three months, they were down to 15 errors. And that's, um, it, it, once we get to that 15 error mark, we can come in and do some training and help with how the administration is going through. Um, if there is any way we can help do some more um, training to keep the accuracy going. They did not have an EMAR, um, so this is just you know individuals passing on a paper mark. 
um, which is the, where you would have to actually physically fill it out. Um, I have a feeling if we had something with an EMAR, it would be even less than that because when you're scanning <coughs> the, the documents and the pictures are showing off, you know that's the right person, you know it's the right medication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, yes. What do you find is the most big error? What's the most common error? So the question was asked, what is the most common error? And honestly, um, Priscilla does all of our error tracking. So what do you feel like is the most tracked error that you've got, Priscilla? Um, are you speaking on our end or on their end? Like on, on their, their end. end. On their, their end. end. On their end, the feedback I get is usually that they forget to pass the med. And the EMAR is something that really helps people with that because we can set it to get an alert. So if something's to be passed at like 8 a.m. and usually people have to pass within between 7 and 9. So if it hits 901 and it hasn't been passed, they get a text or an email or something to alert them that then that wasn't passed. So then they can take the steps they need to take. Thank you. Great question. Any other questions? So you may ask how, well you talked about how are those numbers of 99.97%, how is that possible? So there are two major you know, contributing factors and they both have to be with we're all human. So with that, um, the humans actually package the medications and we're administrating the medications. And so with Safe Dose, the packaging system that we offer, we do have technology that packages that medication. As Priscilla stated, you know, there is all kinds of things that our machine does. It, you know, looks at the pills, makes sure that it's the correct pill, makes sure the weight's there, it makes sure that, you know, we go through the, the process of taking the pictures and making sure that, you know, each bag is actually checked. But on top of that, we're actually creating the dosing event for you. So you're not having to sit there and combine the medications. Maybe somebody comes up and starts talking to you when you're trying to, you know, punch medications out or put them all together in their cup or however you dispense those now currently. We actually create that dosing event for you. So that eliminates the administration errors at that time. I got a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because when I was, uh, as to say, I had an individual that was blind on my caseload, but she yep. had a scanner that would scan and tell her what her meds were in her packet. Do you have that capability? Well, um, so I'm not for, I'd have to check on that. So the EMAR has the packets on it uh, with the SPAR codes. So I don't know if we can get it to talk to her, if okay. she can scan that. So she has a specific can machine. Can you down for me? Mm -hmm. And it'll tell her what her meds are, what they're for, and everything else before you know, she takes it. Do you know the name of the machine? No, but I can probably find out. That would be great. Yeah, I don't know if we've run into that. Yeah, I've never had that question yeah. asked. So there's really one pharmacy here that we were able to get so where, they, where they do that. Yeah, it just scans that and then it tells her everything about her medication. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 that's great. It's perfect. But with this also, the way that we do package our medications, um, so we get our medications from the manufacturers and they come in bottles. And when we get those bottles, we actually pour those bottles into the canisters that happen to be in the machine. And then the machine drops that into the package and actually seals them. So um, I would say what, 90, 99, probably 98% maybe of all of our medications never touch human hands at all. Um, and so with COVID and everything going on right now, just to make sure with that extra, you know, level level of, you know, sanitation, I guess, it just know that that's how our mission, our packages are actually put together. Anything to add to that? Okay. So this is what, um, does anybody use punch cards currently or blister cards? Any of those you do? No? Okay. So this is what a typical um, drug administration would be. And actually there'd be even more cards there. We kind of split it down so we could get the, the gist of it in there. Um, that's 14 different punches is what you're currently doing if you happen to have, you know, this amount of medication, seven drugs, four doses, um, I guess per day is even more than that. So yeah. Okay. But this is what it would be like the exact same with safe dose. 
So as you can see, this is where your um, administration errors would be reduced or eliminated completely because we are creating that dosing event for you. Um, it's also extremely easy if you have someone that goes to a day program, that goes to work, or even needs to go on vacation. Um, so all of our medications, um, I'll show you the packages. Um, they have everything that you would need on them, the name of the patient, the day, date, and time that it's to be taken, the name of each medication, I just say the name of the patient, um, quality, quantity, um, the physical description. So if you're ever wanting to know, you know, what is this little round white pill for, it'll tell you which one is which. The name of the doctor, this one happens to be Dr. Feelgood. And then that is the barcode that you would need for the EMR processing. So with that, um, Amanda, I'm going to ex let you explain how we can um, customize. So one of the things about Safe Dose 2 is we can customize any service that you need. Um, if you have individuals that you want to do packets for, uh, for the compliance packaging, there's many, many different ways we can package those. I'm going to let Amanda explain a couple of what we do. Um, but even if you have somebody that has maybe um, their medications change a lot, if you want to do um, punch cards until we get their regiment back under control, we can do that for just that individual and do everyone else in the compliance packaging. It doesn't have to be an all or one situation. So just keep that in mind as well. I'm going to let Priscilla, oh, just, Priscilla right. okay, <laughs> Priscilla's sure. just more familiar with um, all the different things the machine can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we have two main styles of packets that we use. One is a multi-dose packet that has like up to three different medications in each packet. We also have a smaller single medication packet um, that we have some examples of here. So only one medication per packet. Um, we can put up to 10 tablets in each packet. Um, and then again, all of this stuff is customizable. So say for example, you have somebody, um, we have a patient that doesn't understand these type of updates and we actually put like the word September 1st on her packet instead of 9-1. Like, Dash doesn't grasp that. Um, we have someone who's a little bit um, not totally visually impaired, but a little bit more. So, so the font's bigger mm -hmm. on that person's packet. And we have um, some that want it to say morning instead of like 8 a.m. That's another right. common one. Right. We adjust for people. Right. If you're depending upon what your facility um, requirements are, when you need to pass the beds. So it's more convenient if the packet just says morning, afternoon, dinner, whatever you want it to say, we can make it say. Yeah, mm -hmm. We can say breakfast instead of morning. And yeah. you can you can leave any of that off too if you have mm -hmm. something that's mm -hmm. more of a PRN, correct? Mm -hmm. um, you can leave off a date um, so you can use it as a PRN if need be. We can change the time to military time mm -hmm. if you choose to, if you want to pass with military time. So there's just a lot of different features that we can change. And once again, we can do it for one individual. We can do it for everybody. It doesn't matter to us. It's very customizable. Um, so if something like Priscilla said, we have, you know, those specific individuals that we need to do something a little different for, we are, you know, this system is made to where we can do that to, um, you know, give the best that we can to everybody. But we are not one size fits all. No, we're not. <laughs> Anybody have any questions regarding the packets? And anything that you can think of um, as a specific way that you need something packaged? So this is the medication box. I have some samples up here and I encourage you to come up and look at them. We can pass them out. Um, we have them. We can also put medications in either 28 days or 30 days or even calendar days. Um, it's kind of up to you how you would like them packaged. Um, one of the, I think the most popular one is 28 days. 
and because of that, um, depending on what day of the, you know, what month it is, you always, um, you don't have to worry about the 30 days having to have 31, things like that. But it also allows you to get your medications delivered on the same day. So you know if you have extra staff one day or some, you know, going to be home, um, then we can get those delivered to you. So how does, am I explaining that? Yeah, well? it's just with the 28 days, it's a little bit more convenient for some people because if they know, oh, they're always home on Thursdays and we have extra staff, we can arrange so that things come every fourth Thursday. Whereas when we do the 30 days, you know, it kind of moves around a little bit on the calendar. So it might have to be a Monday and no one's home. So it's kind of convenient that way. Um, it's called, just so you know about the, for the vision, it's called Script Talk. Script Talk. Oh, good. Thank you. It's by um, Envision America, Ian Envision America. We'll dive in later. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to that for you. Because we do have some that do administer their own medications, but sure. this lady is, you know. Well, well, and this is, this is why our system is the way that it is. It is to try to help them be as much independent as they possibly can mm -hmm. be. Um, and for those individuals that you know that can, you know, help do this themselves, it gives them a great sense of benefits that they can, you know, help take care of themselves. So with our medication boxes, um, they are arranged in sequential order by the dosing event. So whatever day of the month they start on, they would start there and continue going forward. Um, all the labels are on the outside of the boxes, just like they would be um, if you had bottles um, or punch cards, anything like that. And then this does help, you know, being able to, we had talked about if you happen to be somebody to be away or, you know, go on vacation or, you know, a day program even, it does allow that. Um, with a day program, we do have the option as well that if you know um, that you would, if you would like this to be done this way, we can do a day program box versus their home box. So you can send it all at once um, to day program. Some individuals just like the idea they can tear it off, put it in their pocket and send it with them. That's, that's fine as well. Um, but we can do separate boxes for warfare day programs as well. Okay. Um, and then of course it's pretty compact compared to trying to put out 10 punch cards or you know however <laughs> you must need. Um, so we are a full service pharmacy. So with that we can, um, whatever you're needing um, as far as um, ointments, inhalers, bulk items, um, things like that. Um, we also offer flu vaccines and TB pen tests um, with a doctor's order if that's something that you are needing for your homes. Um, those are also things that we can get. Not, not administer. But... Not administer, but we can get for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, Bill, you want to explain the COVID vaccine? So that is one thing we cannot do currently is COVID vaccine just because it has to stay frozen. Um, so with um, us shipping it and yeah, refrigerated. Yeah. Um, so with that, that's the one thing we are not doing. Um, but we can get pretty much whatever you're needing when the doctor's prescription otherwise. Okay, any questions? So let me explain a little bit more about our additional features that we offer. So as we've been asked, yes, we are in the state of Indiana. That is where our pharmacy is located. But with that, what happens if you go to the doctor and one of your clientele needs medication immediately that they need to start? I'm going to have you explain that if you will. Sure. So if by chance, you know, I get a prescription for a client and it's like an antibiotic and we know you want to get it started right away, obviously, what we'll do is We'll reach out to whoever our point of contact is for the person, let them know we have the prescription, and we'll find out where is the most convenient place to have it sent. Usually we already have that on file, but sometimes things change, so we confirm, okay, do you want it sent to Walmart or wherever? We'll fill it to the insurance, make sure that there's no interactions between the things that they're already taking at safe dose, make sure the insurance covers it, and then we'll send it over to the local pharmacy for them to fill. We'll make sure we give them all the insurance information, all the directions, and everything of that nature, and then we'll let you guys know what time you can pick it up. Or we can always provide a courier if needed. So we, we partner with your local pharmacy, so you always have a pharmacy available to you. Yeah. Okay. You'll never be without medications. And we want to make sure that you know that's understood that yes, we may be a you know a few miles away, but at the same time you will always have a pharmacy in your back door. Okay. 
And even after hours, we have a 24 7 phone service that will answer yeah. the pharmacist on call. They'll assist you in basically a similar fashion. Okay. Thank you. All of our orders that come across, um, they are saved in our uh, paperless system that we have. It's called DocuTrack. Um, so if you're ever in need of an order for some reason, all you have to do is either email or call your dedicated technician and they can get that um, and email that over to you or fax it over to you. So if you're ever in need of something, um, that's always available. And then um, this question was asked that we do. We are licensed um, for Ohio Medicaid. So um, we do take care of all the billing on the backside for us. And we take care of you know Medicare D, Ohio Medicaid, and the private pays. Um, one of the things um, also with the local pharmacy, if we ever need to use your backup pharmacy, um, if there was a co-payment for some reason that needed to be paid, we would never ask um, your staff to take care of that. We actually would put it on um, a safe dose bill. So you never have to have any medication up front when you go to the pharmacy, or you'll never have to pay a courier or anyone to come bring it to you. And once again, all of these services are at no charge to you. So there's no charge to, um, to use these. Um, with our, uh, one of the other services I guess we offer is we offer all medication records. So if you need, there's a sample of all of these in the front of your book. Um, so that's in that folder there, but we do have the, a paper MAR, which is your medication administration record. So there is a paper MAR there. Um, and I, there's something on that paper MAR. You can cross out dates. Is that what you just got that on there? Yes. So I think it's actually on the treatment order. Okay, so we have sample. a treatment order sheet as well. So there's a daily MAR, a PRN MAR, and a treatment order. So if someone is doing something on just like Tuesdays, we can cross out the other six days of the week to help prevent confusion on that. The MARs, kind of like the packets, are really, really, really customizable. So we can adjust what order things print in, what details show if you want the doctor's name to show on there with it if you want it in military time if you want the orders why they're this, taking it as yeah well. that can we can get all kinds of things on there okay and then you can get a um there's physicians orders as well there's a copy of those um on there and so you will have those for your records so if you could do a combination of mars videos um however you want to do that and then we also offer um, we also offer anything that happens to be a control. Um, we do have count sheets as well, um, and they would come, you know, attached to if depending if you wanted them in packets or if you wanted them in bubble cards, flash cards. Um, but they would come attached to whatever your your packaging is as well for those. And there's no charge for those either. So what actually makes Safe Dose different um, and, and more supportive? First of all, our customer service, you will not, it, it is superb, it is great. And if it's not, you need to call for solar <laughs> um, But you will not find that. We have great technicians that have, they've worked for us for many, many years and um, we have a great staff, I mean, truly. Um, let's see, you always have a pharmacist that's available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Because if we are not physically in that building, as Amanda said, we do have an on-call pharmacist that picks up. There's also a technician that's with them, and if you have any questions, they can always help you. They can see the records, um, so they see exactly what we see. So if you have those questions, you just know that there's always someone available to you. Um, we do work primarily with the IDD population, and so we understand the struggles that you have daily. And if you need something specific or changed, all you have to do is just let us know, and we can implement that right away. Um, usually, at the next cycle, or if you need something changed right away, we can, um, you know, figure out what that is and go on a case-by-case -case basis as to what you need. And then with our accuracy rating of the 99.797, I don't know of anyone else in the business. We've never heard of anyone, so um, we'd love to, to know, but we've never heard anybody that has that accuracy number. So with that, we take it extremely serious. That, that means less paperwork for you, less concerns, and more safety to your clients. So 
So what does this mean actually and cost savings to you as um, group homes, as you know, individuals that take care of these caregiver or your, you know, your caregivers and your staff here? So with that, the bottom line is, is you're going to save on medication management, um, checking in your medications, um, trying to dispense your medications, um, the record keeping that you're going to have, all of that's going to be provided to you. <coughs> the dosing event is created for you. The administration errors will be down. Um, your CE training is going to be available if you need that for any reason, just to even have some additional staff development. Um, that is going to be offered to you. And you're going to save extra time by not having to look for data. Anytime that you need something, all you have to do is contact your dedicated technician either by email or phone, and he or she can get that right over to you um, and send that to you so you have that. Um, and we can also help with any kind of audit issues. If you have an audit that comes through and you're needing some information reporting, we can always help with that as well. That's another thing that's great about an EMAR is you can go in and truly just put dates in and it will tell you everybody that received medications and the date and time stamped. So that's that's a great tool for any kind of audits that you may have or state coming in, things like that. Um, let's see here. And of course, there's no charge for any of the services that we offer today that we've talked about. And then there's no delivery fees um, or courier fees if you need to go get something, you know, something delivered to you from the local pharmacy. I wanted to touch on, I had a client last week that they've, they've been our client for over a year. They've been using punch cards and they have recently decided to transition clients to boxes. She emailed me and said that she timed her closet checks, like, you know, her cart checks, and that she took half the time doing it when she switched to boxes, which I thought was amazing. So. Just a little plug for the boxes. They, they save a lot more time than people realize. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any questions? How tricky are they to open? So if somebody self-administering the boxes. Well, I have plenty of samples. So if you would They're like to take easy. the sample out of the front, all you would tear side to side. There is one side that I feel like is a little okay. bit more. The, the one side has like the jagged edge. Yeah, just tear it off. where you want to start. And they, they slide pretty easy. And those are Tic Tacs. So you can have a little stuff, but they were left about your tic-tac in there. They're, oh, we just made them, so they're fresh. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're nice fresh tic-tacs too. So. Yeah. And they're perforated between packets, so you can easily take one packet off if you need to. And we have some samples. Um, I'm not for sure how we can get those to our virtual um, individuals watching, but we have some samples that we can get to them. So they can they can they can even have their TikTok too. <laughs> so how does this impact your organization? So your dispensing errors are going to be eliminated through our six step process. The administration errors are going to be reduced significantly because we are doing that dosing event for you. Um, staff time, we've got it as an average of at least five minutes per dosing um, for each individual that you have to you know, give medications to, it's going to save you at least five minutes with this packaging system. It could be even less um, or even more safe, I guess I should say, with the EMAR, with the scanning and realizing you've got the picture and the safety um, behind that and then the scanning of the medication. Also with the EMAR um, and the scanning of the medication, for some reason, if something is discontinued, um, that if you scan the barcode, it'll tell you you cannot pass that med. So that's also a good safety feature for that as well. Um, you will have real time access to your your MAR um, through that EMAR that you can reprint if you need to. Um, and then the billing errors, we're going to make sure some, I don't know if this has ever happened to anyone, but I've gotten a couple phone calls that said, oh my gosh, I went to go get my medicine filled and they filled it for me, but now I have a $200 bill and I had no idea. Um, and so those, those concerns would be eliminated. We'll also make sure that we've got those formularies, you know, taken care of, anything like that. Um, because we'll let you know um, ahead of time if there's a larger co-payment that you're not expecting. And then one of the things we haven't necessarily talked about quite yet, but all of the medications, the interactions between the medications are checked at every fill. And I'll just let Priscilla, if you will, just touch base on that just real quick as far as like how that does, how it works. 
Um, all of that. Every time an order is entered for a patient and a pharmacist is double checking that order, we are always going over all of the patient's medications every time. Um, we're not only relying on the computer to pick up interactions and those things, but we're actually looking at everything ourselves as well. Us, us pharmacists tend to be a particular bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> I can admit it. <laughs> I have my ways. <laughs> We've had some individuals that have come to us and they've been on the same, you know, like class of medications, multiples, and you know, Priscilla's been able to help say, you know, do they really need these to, right, um, right. to do this? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is nice to have that extra, 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 extra. set of eyes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the controlled substance, we can actually, um, you know, dispense those to you any way that you need. We could do them in the punch card. Um, if it's okay with your facility protocols, we could put them in the packets if you would like. We could do an individual packet strip with just those in there as well. So there are multiple ways that we can do those for you as well, but just know that you always get the forms for the control sign off sheets if that's something um, that you're looking for as well. Put something there. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Okay. So you may ask, how is the transition over to Safe Dose? Um, so I'm going to let Amanda explain to you how we're going to, uh, what all we would need. But at the beginning, what we have is we do have um, an agreement, I guess I would call it. Um, and with that agreement, it, it spells out what Safe Dose will do for you, um, how those medications will be packaged. Um, and it, just so you know, there is a 90 day out for any reason. It doesn't matter what the reason is. We want someone to stay with us because they love us. They love our packaging. They you know, appreciate what we do, uh, not because you signed a contract that says you have to stay for a year. Okay, so just know that that is something that we do ask for. There is a HIPAA form as well that allows us to talk about your individuals with you. And um, those are two things that we do ask to be signed. And then we will agree on what we call a timeline um, with what it's called a welcome call. And so what it is, is it will be uh, usually myself, Priscilla, um, usually Amanda, and then your, your dedicated technician will be on that call with us. And we're gonna go through an entire list of things. How do you want your controls? How do you want your medications? Do you want 28 days? Do you want 30 days? Where do you want your statements? If there are any, where do you want those sent to? Things like that. Um, and then Amanda's gonna need some information to start that six step process. And I'll let her explain what it is that you need to, those all the demographic things from you guys. Yeah. So we would need the demographic information, including insurance, obviously. Um, when we get the demographics, we'd want where to ship it to, any allergies the patients have. Um, it's usually easiest if we have a copy of their recent MAR, so we can verify what time people are taking things, make sure that everything transitions as smooth as possible. And then we would just get transfers from their current pharmacy. We could take those also in, um, how, how else can we get them, I guess? We, we can use, also do a signed physician order. If you guys use those, do you use signed physician orders much? Yes, no. I mean, we don't personally. I, mean, I think the yeah. providers that have yeah. like a punch card, they, they definitely have the. Okay, yeah, yeah. some um, people use them. So we can do um, signed POs from a doctor. We can transfer them from the local pharmacy. We can always just start calling doctors and telling them, hey, this person's moved and get new scripts all together. Mm -hmm. yep. And then once all of that information has been received, um, our staff will start doing the entering of all of that. The pharmacist will check to verify that what has been entered is truly what was sent over. And then we're gonna start that six step process and send you that bill list, okay? So once all of that process goes through, then your first cycle will be delivered and you said usually 10 to 14 days before you're supposed to start and um, during that first delivery if you would like um, we can also send out one of our technicians to be with you to help you know with check-in to help doing um, even the first day of, of med passing if that's something that you would like 
So just know that that is a, something that's available to you if that's um, of interest. Okay. We really do try to um, you know, minimize any disruption. So if you need help gathering data and information, we're more than happy to help with that as well. So this is Safe Dose. This is all of our individuals that work with us. And if you remember, we are the pharmacy. They care for you so that you can care for them. I know I have presented a ton of information. Um, is there any additional questions that anyone can think of that um, you have? When, if it's an individual receiving the medications in their mid cycle on there, do they, is, what do they, what information do they get to help them, if any, to say, okay, start using these and what to do with what they have left of their previous medications or? They, so you're saying if they have a medication change? Well, no. they, they switch pharmacies. They've got medication from their previous pharmacy. They're going to start getting medications from Safe dose. safe dose and they come and they're going to start using it. Do they get any support on what they're going to do with what? Absolutely. So first of all, one of the things that we're going to do in the welcome call too, it depends if it's an individual or if it's like a whole group mm. home, however, we're still going to ask how many medications does this individual have on hand? And so we're going to line it up to where we start that medication for when their medication that they currently have is running out. Okay. And the boxes, um, the way that they are put, um, they have the date on them as to what day it is to start and when it goes through. And so because of that, I'm hoping that helps, but we can also do um, like a video call or something to help them. Um, we can also put in a document, a piece of paper in the box with them and just remind them, continue to use what you have. This will start on you know Monday or Tuesday, whatever, April 21st is. Um, and then we can do that as well. That's part of that. Um, if we need to customize something, we're more than happy to do that. And kind of going along with that, sometimes, you know, their medications don't all end at the same time, but we want the box to start all at once. So if they have maybe two or three days of this one and four or five of that one, <laughs> we're more than happy to say, okay, we're going to start the box on this particular day. And then all those couple little random pills we can help you dispose of to prevent any confusion. Because I think that's where some confusion comes in. Okay. It's when they've gotten things filled on their own and you know they have four of this and seven of that and mm -hmm. three of those and we can just kind of start with a clean slate. Thank you. That's kind of the basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can kind of start with a clean slate out. usually makes it easy. I've not got two of these and what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And, and you're, I mean, and Amanda is here and you're a technician. So anytime you have questions like that, just say, what should I do? What can I do? What's, what's an option? We service, you know, like I said, the IDD population. So there's, there's many of you that we service that we can say, oh, this is how this individual, you know, took care of it. This, would this work for you? Kind of thing. Thank you. We love to hear those stories. We love to hear how you are, you know, how you, you do something so we can share that information with others. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, thank you all for coming. Um, we would love to earn your business. We would love to talk to you if this is something that you feel would, you know, benefit you, you and your, your individuals that you service. Um, so, we have our contact information. If you'd like to reach out to, to myself directly, um, I can, we'll figure out what we need to do to get you guys rolling. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.